so I'm out in this beautiful ancient forest. I come out for breakfast. I'm gonna do some uh, experimenting with a tranger. Uh, I'm gonna try and do a full breakfast, um, porridge, coffee, and poached egg on toast. Worked up a bit of a sweat walking. I am now starving, so yeah. not too much hanging around. I think just need to get on with it. Right, yes, so this is the smaller of the trangers. I think it's the 27. I think that's what they call it. And uh, yeah, we'll also maybe have a look at cleaning up afterwards as well because, um, you know, people cook on these, but they do get messy and, uh, you know, there are ways of looking after them. Uh, out and about in situ as it were. So let's get this set up, get the porridge bubbling, and then we'll have a look at doing eggs on toast as well. I've got an idea for the toast. Whether it works is another thing. So, you know, we're experimenting. Bit of fun on a day off. I'm sure most of you have seen a tranger before, but you know, we'll have a, we'll have a little quick look together. These are Swedish thing. Uh, that's your base. That's your kind of stove bit that everything fits into. Let's see if we can get that sort of level. Okay, and you get a kettle, two pots. You also get a frying pan and a grabby thing. Uh, that over there with that. So, in the kettle. I have one mini scourer, I think they come from Lidl or Aldi, uh, one little dinky bottle of washing up liquid and the burner itself. So the burner, this is what they call a simmer ring, so for adjusting the heat and then that. Uh, is the unit itself. That's the lid with the seal. Classic tip, you know, don't put this back on while the unit's hot because you melt your seal. So chuck that over there. That sits in the slot. Okay, and then in my bag, I've got an actual official Tranger bottle, but it's a sealed unit. Uh, unscrew the cap and then you push the cap for the fuel to come out here. This is uh, biofuel in here. Uh, you can use meths, but biofuel is a little bit cleaner and better for the environment. Right, so first things first though, I think I'm going to get porridge on. This is a sachet of golden syrup porridge. And uh, I'm going to shove that on because this can cook and then sit while everything else gets itself ready. Now I'm going to make this up with water, but then I'm going to add milk powder to it when it's cooked. And while that just sorts itself out, get the kettle on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the kettle right up because while that's too much for, uh, you know, one coffee, this, this pot should do about two coffees. Um, that will be my washing up water afterwards. So I'll pop that over there ready and then give this a bit of TLC while it just bubbles up. So did everyone have a nice Christmas? <laughs> no, it's about to rain. Oh dear. Didn't bring a tarp out with me or anything. I've got a jacket, so that'll be fine. But yes, I hope everyone had a good Christmas and you're all well rested and well fed. I wanted to make this breakfast because it's kind of a, I mean, I wouldn't say it's super healthy, but it's quite a clean breakfast. You know, poached eggs are better for you than fried. Uh, I don't know if they'll work on here, but we'll have a go. And uh, obviously toast is something that, 
you know, you don't get to eat when you're camping. Um, but you can toast things on this Tranjum, and you know, we'll have a go. Whether the toast is too big, I'm not sure. I've done hot cross buns and things on here. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. All right, it's gonna let that porridge bubble for five minutes and then we'll get it off and cover it. Just for a minute. Let's do some eggs then. So poached eggs, you know, people get them little plastic poacher things that sit in a pot, but you can do it without that. You just need water in your pan. So the egg white does spread out and uh, a few drops of vinegar just helps stop that from happening. Not too much, just a little splash. just help the eggs stay in an egg shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack the eggs into there, let it just sort of simmer for a minute, and then I'm gonna take it off with a lid on and just let them finish cooking in the steam while I put the porridge back on, heat it a little, and then I'll have a go at doing some toast. And then the last job will be kettle back on and uh, make the coffee. Exciting. I do like cooking on this tranja. I mean, I don't take it on every trip because it's quite big and bulky, but as a, you know, I've got much lighter stoves that are kind of single use things, you know, one pot, bring a pot to the boil, you know, that's easy food. When you can carry the tranja, it's a really cool system because you've got the different pots and pans and the kettle and all. It's obviously, it's silent because it's a uh, liquid fuel, but it gives you so many options uh, for cooking uh, and for, you know, cooking real food rather than um, you know boiling the bag stuff um, but as I say I don't use it non-stop all the time I know I know a guy that does um, a friend of mine Warren he, he, he uses it near enough every trip um, but I you know if I'm in a forest I'll use a fire so there's no point carrying it then and if I go up a mountain I take a very light stove and I'll eat out of a bag because you know it's all about weight saving but there are certain trips uh, where this system is just, uh, it, it's wonderful. So um, yeah, there are so many things you can do and I've, I've experiment, experimented with stuff on this channel. So, you know, have a look on the outdoor cooking playlist. Um, there's a fair few, you know, you can make a pizza on the tranja, you can do a full fry up, you, you know, you can bake a cake, all that sort of thing can be done. Uh, you just got to uh, experiment and try, as I say, poached eggs, I eat poached eggs all the time at home, um, but never tried it outside. So here we are. Right, I've almost got a boil, so let's see if I can crack these eggs neatly. I'm trying to keep them in the middle as best I can, or together so that then I can use a lid. So when you're cooking poached eggs, if you boil it like mad, then they're all gonna come apart. So you do have to control the heat a bit. As I say, there is a simmering for this. So if we just lift that off, and drop that in there, just to bring the heat down a little bit, and we just cook them slowly. That will be the way. Let's see if we can just balance the lid. There we go. Just let a bit of steam build up to cook the very top of the yolk. So tool-wise, things I got, you know, the egg, the egg carrier is a really cool thing. A couple of quid on Amazon. The GSI spatula is a few quid, uh, seven or eight, nine quid, something like that. I've had this years, it's a good thing. 
I've got a plate, a cup, and then the cook set itself. And for things like milk powder, I bought off eBay a while back. I bought these little sort of know, almost like air rifle bullet tins. Um, they just they seal up. Got a bit of butter in that one. One's got salt and pepper. One's got milk powder. So you know they weren't expensive, and they're they're a cool thing for you know just transporting things like milk powder, sugar, coffee, that sort of stuff. So you're not using you know plastic bags too much. That's going to do us. I'll let them finish cooking in the water. Leave the lid on. Give the porridge another flash. So just going to add a bit of milk to this. So we have a flame and let's see if we can just stand some bread in, oh careful, that's better, just around the edges, let's see if we can't get that to toast using the edge of the flame, so that's, yeah that's pretty warm. That's coming on a treat. Keep turning it. We're definitely getting toast. Nice. Right, got a bit of butter. Hold this butter. A couple of poached eggs. Bit of salt and pepper. Oh. A bit of coffee. Porridge. Poached egg on toast. Awesome. That was a success, I think. eggs on toast. Ah, amazing. Got a knife. Oh, it's a runny egg. Lovely. Mmm. So I've got a coffee to drink and then I've got to clean this up and put it back together so let's have a look and see how possible that is in the real world I mean <laughs> I've got very limited water I've got that much left in my Nalgene and then a 
half a cup's worth in the kettle of warm water. So we'll have a go. Um, I am in the forest, there's lots of moss about, so I'm going to use a bit of moss to give it a kind of a, just to get the bits off, and then we'll be, you know, a little splash of water, be very tight with the water, give it a clean up with the scourer, and um, hopefully we'll be golden. Uh, so, yes, I say, a little bit of washing up liquid, a little scourer, and a couple of tissues for drying keep them separate for now but if we can just get the worst off and it, it depends where you are you know leaf matter at a push sand if you're near the beach just you know salt water just whatever's around you but then if you finish it with some hot water out the kettle and a bit of soapy soapy goodness then um, you know you can get it relatively clean The moss has kind of antibacterial properties to it as a plant, so it's always a good one to reach for if you're trying to clean stuff up. And obviously, you know, when this gets home, it can all go in the dishwasher, but as a temporary measure, it's fine. Given it all, you know, a rough clean, you could cook on this again because the minute you add a bit of heat to it, you know, you're killing any germs. So, if you're on a multi day trip with something like this, you can, you know, clean it the best you can, but then before you're cooking it, just chuck it over the heat, kill any bacteria for 30 seconds. You know, it's, it's not too bad. You're good to go again. Minimal, minimal water is is the name of the game. You know that was a a cup full of water, and uh, you know I know my friend Warren. He's he's had his tranger for 35 years, and it's cleaner than mine. He cleans it every time he uses it, and it is absolutely spotless. So it is possible to look after these things. I mean I'm probably not the best advocate for that because. I don't look after stuff very well in general. It's, you know, stuff like this, it's there to be used. If I'm going home straight away, I'll just shove it away in my bag dirty. But this, I'm just demonstrating that it can be done, you know, multi-day trips. All you need is a couple of bits of kitchen roll, a little teensy bottle of washing up liquid shoved in there with it and a baby scourer, you know, half a cup of water. And you can end up with you know, clean equipment ready for, you know, use for the next meal, as it were. And incidentally, you know, still got some uh, out of leaf. 
it's still got a quarter of a tank as it were of uh, fuel burners cooled down so seal it up and that shouldn't leak but they always give you this bag with it in and I always keep it because it can wrap that right up and then it definitely won't leak so that goes back in there washing up liquid little thing little scourer lid on Baby pots, kettle, grabby thing, lighter as well. I forgot to mention that. There we go. One awesome Swedish cook kit. And that's it. Breakfast done. Washing up done, coffee to drink, and then I'm going to make my way. It's getting a bit dark and horrible. I think it's going to rain. Hmm. But yeah, I hope that was a uh, a helpful demo. <laughs> it was just I had a bit of time, so um, I just wanted to get out and sit in the woods and uh, cooking something to eat is an excuse to sit still in amongst the trees, really. But yeah, it's lovely here, really nice. But I think I'll probably make my way home before it gets wet and horrible. Mm. But listen, thank you for watching, appreciate it. Happy New Year, everybody. And um, yeah, I'll see you again soon. I think I'm going camping in a week or two. Um, but yeah, a little bit of time off over Christmas doesn't hurt anyone. So, merci beaucoup, and uh, thumbs up the video if you can. That really does help. Um, and yeah, check out some other Tranja cooking videos if you like this sort of thing, because I've done a few now, and um, yeah, I really enjoy it. <sighs> Thanks. See you later.